banger in the a banger. <laughs> Professionalism is my middle name. Barrow in the rain. And man, is there rain. It's like a biblical deluge out there. It's all yeah, it's been pouring down. Imagine it's been worse on the, the, the southern bit of the M6 than, than up this end. But it's absolutely tipping down. The wind's not a problem, which is good because obviously it's pretty open ground. And thankfully for me, the old press box is better than I expected. Because I've only been here once before, and that was two years ago. And man, that was an experience. I went up to that press box, it was about a third of the size of that, and had opaque walls, and the benches were way back from the windows. So unless you're in the middle seats, you couldn't see one of the goals. Um, I was told, oh, don't worry, we've got an overspill. And I was put into the, oh, into the home end. Barrow fans are, are not shy. And told that I could just stand in a little chained off section. And I, I didn't fancy doing my ultra bias Wrexham commentary while surrounded by the banger, the, ba- the, again, the Barrow Ultras. So I opted to go with the Wrexham fans in the seats. I really didn't know where I was going to be today. But, uh, well, <laughs> I've survived. I've got a seat in the big new uh, press box. Uh, so I'm an happy man. I'm now off to get a, a Cumberland sausage in a bap, which, as I recall, two years ago, was pretty damn fantastic. Better view of the uh, press box. Oh, I've spotted my position well there, haven't I? All bluebirds are blue. So it's a very philosophical bent they've got up here. No uh, Cumberland sausage bap, sadly, but oh, quality bacon bap. So by really nice people. It's look, they're a very friendly club up here, so they're lovely. Even a nice little bench up there if it was the summer. Maybe I'll pop myself there and top up the town. But it's, it's not summery weather, I've got to be honest. There's a mist is worrying you back there. I could see the hills behind there before. But I can't now. Wet enough for you. This is Barrow. Absolutely pouring down. Not as windy as I feared though. Apparently 48 column onto his wind here last uh, night. No team news yet, but... Uh, it's going to be sopping wet, I can tell you that, for absolutely nothing. I like Holker Street, there's a, there's a pleasing old football league ground feel about it, but undoubtedly the best thing about the ground is uh, the water features. All right, between the, all the pillars and in, <laughs> in all the mist, that's Holker Street, Barrow's ground. The Wrexham team's in, in now, and surprise, surprise, completely unchanged in the subs bench as well. The main news on the Barrow side is that Phil Bolland is not playing, so only two of the back, um, South, Southport? I want to call Bangor as well. The Barrow back four, actually, ex Wrexham. Uh, big game, Steve. I'm not allowed to show Steve for contractual reasons. He's too pretty for our website. Yeah, it is, it is Mark. Wrexham looking for their seventh game, uh, seventh win on the bounce in the league. Uh, important game. It's a foul day here up in Cumbria. Uh, a lot of the pitch is looking in pretty good nick, to be honest, as the players warm up on it. So, uh, important for Dean Saunders and his guys to get off to a good start. The, uh, the last three away games, we've started fast, we've put teams under pressure, and I think that's basically the way they'll try and do it today. Although, looking at the Barrow team sheet, it looks like they may, may be trying to match us with a 4 3 3 formation. Looks like it. I think it'll be a battle, as you say, in these conditions. Be interested to see how Wrexham do. Let's try and get a half a dime update whenever. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Garen Pally, Mr. Wrexham, is that the salubrious press box at Barrow half time, nil nil. Wrexham will be disappointed, frankly. They lost Neil Ashton to a head injury, didn't look too serious, but he had to go off. And also, after starting the game really well, an early chance fell to Mangan, who put over from six yards, and Morrell had a chance he drove straight at the keeper. Everything just started to peter out, and the momentum went. and and well, by the last 20 minutes, it was all pretty even stuff. Dean Keats had a chance from a free header he put over. But quite frankly, Steve, Rex will be disappointed they haven't capitalised on such a good start. Yeah, indeed they will, Mark, to be quite honest. And, and I think as the second half progresses, Wrexham have got to come out and uh, up, the, uh, up the tempo. There, there is our famous commenter, no, KT, Mr Mark Griffiths. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, Wrexham started well, but uh, the tempo's been nowhere near as high as it has been in recent away games. And uh, I'm not sure whether that's a deliberate tactic or whether it's just because of the way Barrow have played. But Wrexham certainly haven't been able to do as much uh, going forward as, as, as they would have liked and uh, I think the half time break came at the right time giving them an opportunity to regroup Saunders to have a chance to uh, to speak to the to players again and, and get the tactics sorted out as the keeper Masters takes the kick and that's the final whistle Wrexham have got a crucial win they're sixth in the row in the league a controversial win because the penalty was awarded in the 81st minute that Wrexham scored from. Didn't look about it. Looked like a dive by Pogba as he went down the keeper. He went down late, but the ref gave it. Andy Mangan slammed it into the net to give Wrexham the win. And after that, Wrexham should have scored more. They missed some great chances. They dominated the first 20 minutes, but after Neil Ashton went off with the cuts to his head, they lost momentum. 
and only got it back when Barrows, Wayne Curtis was sent off in the 47th minute for a rash lunge at Chris Blackburn, but it took a lucky penalty award, in all honesty, to give them the victory.